have to apologize for being late. Council just adjourned. It is uh, the Arts, Parks, Health, and Aging. And uh, let's start talking right now. Madam Clerk, this uh, meeting is called to order. Item number one. Item number, item number one. Any cards on item one? No right. cards on item number two. Consent. Okay. Any cards on item two? Item three. Consent. Do you have to read any of those uh, into the record? Just read them into the record real quick. Okay. Item one was a report from the Department of Aging relative to amending senior service contracts. Item number two is a Department of Aging report relative to extending the physical activity demonstration project. And item number three was a report from El Pueblo and a CIO report relative to a proposed lease agreement with Camachos. Great. So that's good. Consent on all of them. Send them forward to council. Thank you, okay. staff, for being here. Number four. Number four is a report from the Board of Recreation and Park Commissioners relative to the assignment of concession agreements at the Hanson Dam Equestrian Center. Mary Benson. All right, let's go right now. Here we go. We have one card for item number four. Uh, good afternoon, Hi. Council Member Labonge. It's good to see you again. Thank you. Uh, we're here to comment on the uh, transfer of the lease, and we understand that this is a transfer with no new terms being added. One of the things that uh, we're excited about is a new concessionaire that will bring new energy to the area. One of the things we're hoping for is a provision somehow that will allow rangers to keep horses on site like the LA Equestrian Center. Well, let me ask the uh, city attorney, is that possible? Well, for this matter, um, you're dealing with a contract. Right. which is a long-term contract and the charter uh, allows only that you either approve or disapprove it so you can approve it as written disapprove it but uh, you can also comment I want to on help it. out the horses for the Rangers you can comment back to the department on it but it would require a future contract amendment got it okay we'll do that Mary. We're that sounds not good. in favor of disapproving the contract got it we want to approve the contract mr. Reagan I think the only thing I would say to kind of put it in context council member is that uh, the Rangers Equestrian Unit is going through some changes right now. Currently, we have four horses. We're going to be narrowing that down to two horses. But whatever in the future, we may want to have a home for them. We could talk to these people and come back later and work it out. Mary, good suggestion. Anything else? No. Man, uh, Ms. Hahn, we're approving this uh, Hanson Dam matter. It's okay with you. It's been reviewed by staff. Staff supports it. It's about goats yeah. and horses. Horses. <laughs> okay. I know. Okay, good. I know. Yesterday was that day. Okay, we'll move this forward. That's uh, move forward to co uh, council. Now, item number five. Item Thank number. You, item number five is a city attorney report and a draft ordinance dated July 11th, 2007, relative to repealing provisions of the LA Municipal Code. Thank you very much. Does anyone what? like to join the uh, city attorney? This is the uh, neighborhood prosecutor. The city attorney city attorneys first maybe give a quick overview would you I can read item number six into the record would you like to take item number five and six together boom, boom. thank you okay yes so item number five was the ordinance uh, dated July 11 2007 and item number six is the city attorney report and the revised draft ordinance dated April 1st 2008 well, these, these, these are the or these are the ones these are the Venice ordinances correct um, yes Five and six? Yes, if I could uh, just right. address that. I have the deputy for five. Mr. Rosendahl come and speak right now? We run a one-minute clock when there's more than seven people in the meeting room in the interest of public safety. So if you don't mind, say it in one minute. Here we go. Thank you. <laughs> After about a dozen... Just introduce yourself for the oh, record, Bill. Oh, okay. Norman Culla, uh, Councilman Rosendahl, Senior Council and Northern District Director. Um, after about 12 sessions with Judge Pragerson, right. which had public participation, he, he invited the public in many cases into his chambers as well as in open court, and many other sessions with only the lawyers, uh, of which everyone here was part of and, and even more, uh, we, we are 
entering into a settlement. This is a settlement. It's litigation settlement of a First Amendment litigation. And this ordinance, in essence, is uh, one that the court uh, would hold constitutional. Thank you. Do you support this? We do. Great. I appreciate that. Thank you very much, Norman. Can I ask uh, Kevin Reggie, you want to speak to this at all from Record Parks? Real quick. You could stay right there, Mark. We're just switching seats. You're out of there, Norman. I'm out. <laughs> I'm gone. <laughs> You've seen those TV shows. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I, would, I would echo what uh, Norm just said. The, uh, the department uh, is in favor of this. We've worked long and hard. We've worked closely with the city attorney's office. We did have a commission meeting this morning, and the item did uh, uh, go through the commission. Uh, so and was there public comment at the commission there meeting? There was some public comment. Good. And uh, I just think uh, there's been an awful lot of work. There's been a lot of work on staff as well as uh, uh, city attorney, as well as the council members, as well as uh, people from the community. So it's... It's uh, what we think will pass constitutional muster, not speaking for the... Great. Sure, I think the only thing that we uh, wanted to just remind the council is that this does have a financial impact on the department. We will have to do some new signage. We'll also have to provide staffing to monitor and uh, handle the permitting process. So we will at some point in time be looking at... Yeah, you just figured out. You sure, know, we, there's we, no more money left here. You got to figure it out. You got to figure it out, Kevin, because I don't think there's how much money you're talking about. We've come up with an estimate of about eighty-two thousand dollars. Eighty. So you can figure that out. Just figure it out, and then come back if you need help. Sure. See me, but try to Just figure it out. Just pointing it out as a. I understand that, but we're going on a very tough time coming up with the budget that's here. Sure. So I know uh, Miss uh, uh, Sofia Cortez is here from. Uh, so you need anything to say uh, on this, or does Kevin say it all? That's good. And Robert Heskin, Robert, you're the administrator for the area. Yes. You're out at Venice. Yes. Please come to the center table here. <laughs> okay, thank you. He's got one fan out there. Good job. All right, that's good there. <laughs> All right, Robert, you've reviewed this. Okay. You think this is workable, and it can improve the quality of life for everybody out there. Yes, I do. Okay, so we should move forward here from our city attorneys. Take it under deliberation and act on it today. You think the recommendation is good? Yes, I do. It's very important, Ms. Han, that we hear from the person who's actually on site. Robert, thank you very much for that. At this point, we're going to go to our city attorney. I know our neighborhood prosecutor, Ms. O'Neill, has been working there for years in trying to help the quality of life in the area. Uh, you've worked on this issue. Give us your overview. We started this, I think, in 2002, trying to respond to LAPD complaints, resident complaints, and business owners of a lot of the issues that went down on the boardwalk with the fighting and the noise problems. Right. And it's been a long haul, but we worked on it with so many city departments that we feel like now is, is it's, we've got a really good handle on it. And I think Mark Brown is going to explain to you some of the... Yeah, I want somebody to explain to me why this one is better and how it's going to work <laughs> for all those concerned. No one's really done that yet. I understand that. I have a uh, program here, Ms. Hahn, and I will just get to that same point right now. <laughs> 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 call me out, Ms. Hahn. You can't chew gum in class. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, Mark, could you give an overview yes. of I, this here? I had a here. teacher in, in college that actually lowered an entire grade on one of my exams because I was chewing gum, which I thought there was absolutely no correlation between <laughs> really? chewing gum and uh, the grade I got on an exam. So I'm glad to hear that. Did you know, uh, <laughs> you know when I went to college, it's hard to believe in rooms smaller than here at City College you could smoke in class? Wow. Remember, anybody remember that in college at all? <laughs> no. Yeah. Smoke what? Smoke what? All right, Ms. Hine, you've been in council too long. <laughs> Mr. Brown, please yes. give an overview for the committee and, the, and everyone within the sound of this voice on what we're doing here yes. and how come it's going to be effective and better for the city of Los Angeles. Yes, this code section yes. Um, yes. has existed for a long time. The basic, uh, the basic premise of the code section is to prohibit vending in a city park. Uh, and it, particularly in this very unique and important city park, uh, the Venice Boardwalk. And we've had several iterations of this ordinance, as has been alluded to by uh, Council Member Hahn. And the, we've, had, we've drawn litigation uh, more than once. This uh, last litigation, um, and I should really let Mr. Nagel speak to this, he's the litigating attorney. But uh, when we got to court, the judge expressed uh, 
some reservations about the way we had drafted the ordinance the last time. We thought that was a good way to go, but the judge said the law of the Ninth Circuit is a little bit different. I have some problems with some of the provisions, but I recognize that you've been struggling with this issue and the city's been trying to do the right thing. And rather than rule against the city, what we're going to do is we're going to bring the parties together and we're going to craft a solution. And, and we're going to we're going to all sit down together and we're going to all figure this out, which is very unusual. And as as uh, uh, Norman Cullough mentioned to you, we had over a dozen hearings with tons of not just participation by the parties and the litigants but, and the attorneys, but also uh, Reckon Parks was there, the police department was there, members of the general public were there. Um, we've, we've spent more than a year since we brought you this first ordinance saying we should repeal a couple of the provisions the court was having a problem with, which we're now recommending you receive and file that. That's item five. We've spent more than a year crafting something that um, doesn't please everybody 100%, but which the judge has stated is, is a workable solution to this problem. He hasn't ruled on it one way or the other. He's not going to rule in this case. We've actually uh, agreed to settle this case, and a very important thing to, uh, a very important piece of that settlement is this ordinance. And this, this ordinance, um, is what's before you today, not the full settlement. The full settlement will come back. Come at a later time. At a later time. So but, it, okay. but to explain what we've done, yeah. what the judge has asked us to do, um, there, there were a lot of different parties, stakeholders on the boardwalk. Pretend this is the boardwalk, this wall. So explain what you're going to do. Well, there Usually. were 200 spaces along okay. the boardwalk yeah. before designated. Uh, <laughs> the, the council had authorized that, and the commission had implemented program rules to, to allocate and, and assign those spaces by a weekly lottery system. Right. You'd had to have a permit right. and you had to obey the rules and then you could exercise your right to free expression. Right. Uh, would, it, the, the slight modification that's taking place here, which is, which is really uh, of great importance, is some of those spaces were right across from the adjacent private businesses right. and all kinds of things were being sold right. and it was very difficult right. um, for Reckon Parks and the police department to get uh, control of that partially because of the intervening lawsuit which didn't allow for the right. enforcement but um, what the judge asked us to do immediately was to take some of the vending, which is legal, of expressive items, not right. of commercial products, but of expressive items, and put it in a separate zone away from these private businesses. So we had now have two types of spaces on the boardwalk in those approximately 200 spaces. There will actually be 205. So the free and speech type. There will be the performer spaces, okay. the core speech spaces in what's called the performance zone or the P zone, and then there will be uh, a zone where items that are inextricably intertwined with the message of the speaker can be vended and, and those will be vended in the I zones. So if you're looking at the boardwalk laid out as 200 spaces, mm -hmm. you have in the middle, pr primarily in the middle, but interspersed, interspersed among those spaces, you have zones where people can engage in traditional free speech activities, performances, uh, they, can, they can display visual art, but they can't sell things. Um, except, for, except for things like newspapers and pamphlets and bumper stickers and things that are traditionally recognized by the First Amendment to just okay. be communicated material. On the edges, uh, items that are inextricably intertwined with the message of the speaker can be, can be vended in the I zones. And, and that is the primary focus of this ordinance, the primary change. There's uh, several other provisions that are also significant. The, uh, the issue of noise regulation on the boardwalk has been addressed in this ordinance and there is a, a zone within the P zone where amplified sound can be used because um, there, there are sufficient buildings across from these spaces that would buffer the sound somewhat and keep it from penetrating into the adjacent residential neighborhood. The other areas of the boardwalk you won't be able to use amplified sound and, and so that's another uh, important point. Within the P zone there's 10 spaces that are going to be unallocated. People can just walk up. They don't have to have a permit. They can oh. just use one mm -hmm. of those spaces. Two of those spaces will be for giving away uh, food. Oh. And, and uh, again, the judge helped us get to that, um, to that okay. point. The other spaces, during peak season in the performance zone, you'll need a, you'll need a permit. During the non-peak season, which is after November 1st and up until Memorial Day, US. you won't even need a permit to use a space in the P zones, but in the I zones, you'll always need a permit. And Reckon Parks is going to enforce uh, the rules on 
vending only inextricably intertwined with speech items in the I zones. They're going to enforce that administratively. That's no longer going to be a criminal violation. If you get three violations, you can have your permit revoked, and then your, your privilege to ban uh, in a, expressive items in those zones would be withheld for a year. Counselor, so who, en who enforces it for Rec and Parks? The ranger? No, the Rec and Park staff will, will have Park some staff. so that's what was being mentioned. Does General there. Service Police help out here, or is it all Rec and Park staff? Uh, General Services Police has, has not been involved in the past, but uh -huh. they Kevin? could be uh, brought in. I think the important thing to realize, or the differentiation, is it's an administrative function, so right. it's, it's going to be handled by actual Rec and Park staff under Robert, and they'll be right. You're good uh, with that, like Robert. recreation Robert's assistants. The These okay, are not good. rangers. And Thank you. Now, your other counselor here. I just here. say one more thing, yeah, and that is know. that that uh, the ordinance itself, though, not the administrative enforcement of vending in the I zones, but the ordinance itself would be enforced by LAPD. And so they're here for that. Okay. okay. So you said that it doesn't make everybody happy, so everybody's equally unhappy, or are there, or are there certain groups that are more unhappy than others? We're equally unhappy. We, huh? we, I, Everyone's equally with, unhappy. With regard to the legitimate um, <laughs> park users <laughs> and, the, and the surrounding people, I think we think they're equally happy. Yeah. But but with regard to with regard to some individuals who were vending commercial items on the boardwalk, they're not happy. Okay. Now one of the important things regarding litigation is introduce yourself, Council. Uh, yes, I'm Mike Nagel with the City Attorney's Office. Thank you, Michael. I expressed your frustration to the judge. You know that we've been doing this for 25 years. We come back, we follow the case law, and then we get shot down. Which is one of the reasons he agreed to help us because he was a Rec and Parks commissioner prior yeah, to being a judge. Yeah, I know. I know. I think that's neat. And one of the important things that I felt was was important in terms of the litigation was that this judge agree to take on future cases. If anybody sues us, everything's going to get related back to the, the case that we were sued on, so he will hear all those cases. Oh. So it'll be in front of the judge who helped write it. That's good. That's good. A very, uh, very special uh, individual from a very special family. His grandfather was a United right. States postal worker, and then his dad, as you know, is a federal yeah. judge who yeah. built the freeway. Right. A settlement there for right. the 105 that took right. so long so that's very good so I appreciate all that report at this point yeah. here so we appreciate, have this down I appreciate all the hard work because it, yeah. it was just an issue I just it was paining my heart uh, uh, when we had a lot of the people come to the City Council complain I really thought we could solve this I thought we could so I knew it was going to be difficult and I knew it was going to take a lot of work mm -hmm. and I really appreciate all of all of all of you staying at that table and, and solving that. And thanks to uh, Bill's staff, too, that worked a lot on this. But hopefully we have something that we can all move forward with. So before we get into public comment, could I just say one thing? In exposing this draft ordinance to the community, we actually surfaced one small ambiguity that we're going to clear up. And I'll bring in a uh, substitute okay. draft on when this comes to full council to okay. deal with that. What is the just ambiguity? What the ambiguity mistake would has you to, make, Mark Brown? The I don't ambiguity has that. to do with, with <laughs> amplified sound. It's prohibited in really right. all areas, but we have a section in there saying it's prohibited in yeah. specific areas. So what I'd like you to do... Uh, it's prohibited in all areas except the few areas where we said it's allowed. Right. Uh, so Madam Clerk, uh, if we get an affirmative vote, when does this come to council? Could we have this? Here's the thing I'm saying, Mark. Is it coming next week? Yes. yes. Yeah, because then you want to publish it. And you want to, if we publish it, then it goes into effect 30 days after that. We want to be before Memorial Day, right. Right. so the summertime, so you could start the summer fresh. Everybody knows the new rules. Right. That's, thank that's you good. all, each and every one of you. We yeah, still have some job. public comment. Appreciate that. Oh, Norman, that. thank you. I know. All right, here. We have a one-minute clock uh, in, su uh, in support of this. Steve Huben. Is that Steve here? Yeah. Come on, Steve. You just support it. You don't need to say anything. Got it. Thank you very much. Jay Gold. <laughs> Gold Fader, thank you very much. Michael uh, Forret, Folker, I'm sorry. Good, and will you f make, all right, we'll look at them, but also will uh, Norman Kula, will you look at those as well? Sure. Okay, Anthony O'Carroll, yes. you support it? Uh, comments. No comment? I have Oh, come on up. Thank you. Where are you from originally? Uh, London. What part? Uh, North London. You ever meet London. the Queen? Sorry? You ever meet the Queen? Queen? The Queen. Come on, man. You said you're from London. Sergeant, check him out. <laughs> oh, go on. Okay, thanks very much. Um, I'm uh, Anthony O'Carroll. Um, I work for a 
company that has owned and operated property on the Venice boardwalk for more than 30 years. Uh, we've just completed uh, some uh, mixed-use space on the boardwalk which straddles uh, Thornton Avenue, uh, building on each side, lofts above, commercial space below, and parking as well. Um, the, um, we're broadly supportive of the ordinance and want to thank everyone for their efforts uh, over the last year, particularly the judge. Uh, but we do have one uh, point that I would like to um, raise with respect to the amplified sound. Um, although the, the, um, the amplified sound is not going to be permitted immediately in front of our building, it is on the blocks to the south, it, or two blocks to the south. It's going to be very loud. Um, the, the, the city recognizes the goal of keeping this noise away from the residences. I just want the, the council to recognize that no longer is it the case that the residences are set behind the boardwalk and that, so therefore it's no longer a question of the noise through. There's also a, a noise issue on the boardwalk itself for us and therefore we would respectfully request that the uh, amplified sound is prohibited on those two blocks to our south. Thank you. Okay, but I don't know if we can make that happen based on that. Mr. Brown, could you answer the gentleman? I think the way the, uh, the ambiguity is going to be resolved, it'll be clear that it, amplified sound is only permitted in the areas, the, the few specified areas where it's permitted. I believe his uh, residential buildings are outside of that area, and so amplified so sound is okay. already going well, to be prohibited. Sorry, but again, respectfully. I, I think you're, you're correct in saying the amplified sound won't be permitted directly in front of us, but it will be on the blocks to the south. There are other residences also, I don't speak for them, but to the south. And uh, I, 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 don't, I think the elimination of, of the, or the extension of the prohibition for amplified sound to those blocks, I don't believe would, I'm not a constitutional lawyer, but I don't believe would have any kind of constitutional impact. I mean, it's not a question of whether people are going to be able to express themselves or not in those areas or make music in those areas. I got it. Whether Counselor, they amplify. Right. answer the, the question. The way, the ordinance, right, the way the ordinance is drafted right now, their sound levels apply whether you're using amplified or non-amplified, but amplified is allowed in essentially three specific blocks. Or All right, well, I ask you to look at this work with the uh, office of Bill Rosendahl, who's very uh, uh, proactive in his leadership as the councilman of the 11th district and his staff. Thank well, you so I much. It. Thank you very much. Okay, Thank Matt you. Dow. Matt, you fill these out at all? I like them all filled out. Where do you live? Brown Act prevents me from revealing that information to the live? city council. Can I just have my comment and a, a good one? Because I've fought for this. Thank you. This is my most victorious day yeah. in two years. I've never, ever given up on this. That's true, yeah. But this is what they do to us that you don't realize. We had a, a draft of this map a couple of weeks ago, and they had amplified zones interspersed. And that was good. I was happy with that. And then they go away to put the I zones interspersed. And with the other hand, they take away all the amplified blocks. Now, my first comment is, why would you move and develop and go to Venice Beach where hundreds of thousands of people come there every weekend and walk down that boardwalk and expect the noise to go away? Now, these, some of these people down on this other end, they play guitar. They have little acoustic guitars. You'll never hear that on a weekend. They all have little amplifiers. I don't get why if this ordinance has a decibel set, a reading that the police can use, then why doesn't that just apply equally everywhere? The other thing I want to mention, I've got to correct Mark Brown. See, I've been in this federal case with Judge Pregerson. In fact, I filed, I wrote, I wrote the motion for the preliminary injunction. It went to Judge Morrow. On the eve of that, Judge Pregerson came and took it because it was valid, and that's why we've got this ordinance. But he made, Mark Brown said, P is for performance. See, that's a simple mistake he shouldn't be making. P stands for pure, P-U-R-E, pure speech, CDs, music. You can sell books. If you wrote a book, it's not, see, and they keep saying this stuff. They go, well, this is the performance. And everyone at the beach is like, oh, this is the performer zone. No then they just don't get it, and they well, keep spreading this misinformation to the I, I will use another word if it's okay with you, I'll, uh, a P word. I appreciate your passion, Matt. 
uh, we're going to move forward in the direction that the city. I'm happy to move, move forward together. just for the sake it. of moving so forward at this point. But this repeal the old one. That's the main thing. Repeal All right. Thank that. you very much. I'll okay. Be happy with that. So does this supersede the previous ordinance, Mr. Brown? Do we have to repeal oh, it the old one? Yes. We do have to repeal. But all is going to be done on Wednesday. No. By enacting this, this will this will repeal the old one this and replace will repeal it. The old. All right, good. Yes. But item item five is that old ordinance that uh, we sent forward a year ago and that we should not adopt and item six is the new so one. five we're receiving adopt. and filing six we're adopting all right madam Both. clerk uh, let's go on number five first call it item number five is an ordinance dated july 11th 2007 to repeal the ordinance and no. that one is being recommended to be received and received filed. received and filed all right uh miss hahn so okay so moved seconded Fourth with the council, item six. And item number six Please. is the new ordinance uh, dated April 1st, 2008, oh. and that's recommended for approval. So moved. I'm very happy to move approval of this. It's very been a long, good. long time. Appreciate everybody that's doing it, uh, and it's worked so hard to do it. Happy to move approval of this new ordinance. Thank you. I second it. Go forward. To council. Thank you. Thank you all very much. Peace on Brian, peace. thank you. Peace yeah, in the future on Venice Boulevard. Hi, good to see you. Thank you. We have some public comment cards here. Hey, uh, Madam Clerk, the, uh, the people in the public comment from Venice right there, have you ever been to the top of City Hall? Okay. For those who are visiting City Hall right now, as you exit the room, just take the elevators to the top. It's a great little view as long as you're here. Good luck to you. Are right, this meeting still in order? Thank you. Thank you, Norman. Joan Taylor for public comment. Thank you, city attorneys. Thank you, Mark Brown. Thank you, Kevin. How you been, Kevin? All right, Joan Taylor. Your call, Joan. I'll try to make, I have three requests. Did you get the three papers? I do, right in front of me. Uh, the first thing is, a few days after your last meeting, Fame took away a grant to give four free $7 taxi vouchers a month Thank you. to 6,250 seniors. And MTA had this regional program, so I assume that all over the county, uh, seniors and disabled have lost a, a four free $7 taxi vouchers every month. And this is added to the cut that you, the city has given. And if you look on the second page of that first item, I'll bring up this later. You'll see the. I got it. You'll see the the um, voucher that they gave us, and I'll bring attention to that because I think LA City should should uh, do something like that. On the second page, I mean the second set of. Uh, I've asked that you have a uh, encourage the DOA or mandate the DOA to have a pilot study and form group rides with those 50 cent vans. Remember the 50 cent van ta get the taxpayer pays a hundred dollars to go 4.4 miles. It's exorbitant. You could take you could increase your ridership 400 percent for the same money if you would just get group rides. And I wish you would try it in Council District 4 because you have a lot of places we can go, the malls and the stores. Thank you. Now, the last thing I'll bring up is to request, and this is where these vouchers come in, that again, ask the DOA in time to cooperate with the Department of Transportation. Take off one of the 50 cent man's different council districts. and have people for the same money give out these vouchers from this senior center desk again you can increase your ridership 400 percent and decrease your costs thank you for hearing me. thank you very much i appreciate it joan taylor mary benson i'll get that microphone for you council member labange mary benson from los angeles trail project here to give you an update on rim of the valley trail first time in 20 years, the Old equestrian guy. hiking and trails guide, I'm taking it down to planning. They're going to scan all the maps in so they'll be available electronically. 
We've got the Rim of the Valley Master Plan available electronically from LA Trails Project. One comment, this hiking guide that was prepared by the City of Los Angeles says it's not a part of the general plan. Please make our hiking and equestrian trails part of the general plan somewhere. Right now, transportation and the mobility element is, is within, uh, you know, is being re-updated. Uh, re and that is the perfect place because the money, $6 million from the state of California, comes from the Federal Highway Administration. Los Angeles gets zero dollars for its trails because it's not in its master plan. Would you send me a note on that, Mary, with yeah. a little backup? I appreciate that. Madam Clerk, anything else before us? Nope. All right, it's 2.59. I again apologize for running late. Thank all the staff, and uh, this meeting is now adjourned.